Oh, hi, guys. It is February 17, 2019. All right, I'm just going to go through some more information that clearly shows Trump is same old, same old in Hebron. Israel removes the last restraint on its settlers' reign of terror. You might imagine that a report by a multinational observer force documenting a 20-year reign of terror by Israeli soldiers and Jewish settlers against Palestinians in a city under occupation would provoke condemnation from Europe and U.S. politicians? Oh no, huh, you would be wrong. 40,000 in this report, 40,000 separate cases of abuse had been quietly recorded since 1997 by dozens of monitors from Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, Italy, Turkey. Some in incidents constitute war crimes. Exposure of the confidential report has now provided the pretext for Netanyahu to expel the international observers. Those observers have kept the peace. The observers now being told they have to leave. You're going to see a whole lot of Palestinians, more Palestinians, killed and forced out of their homes to clear the way for tens of thousands of Jews to come in to Hebron. So, what did we do? The United States? It, it, the international community? Uh, minimal protest? It was stamped out by the United States last week. It blocked a draft resolution at the United Nations Sec uh, Security Council expressing regret at Israel's this is decision, but then added the next day, well, this is an internal matter for Israel. Now, Trump increased, increased the aid. We were giving $3 billion annually. Trump increased it to 3.5. And there's another increase on the way. So, Trump. Oh, you voted for the lesser of evil, you get evil. And you get evil standing next to evil. This is a re-election for Netanyahu. So, he puts up these posters that are like 40 stories high. Trump smiling, shaking hands with Netanyahu. I can't, I do not understand the support that this guy has from the quote-unquote awake community. Very disappointing to see many of my subscribers who I thought we were all on the same page. We're not. We're not. We were on the same page with Obama. Trump comes in. We're not on the same page anymore. Nor will they even take you know, an objective look at all of the evidence. I have a Trump playlist, and this has been going on for years. But no, nope, no, you're not going to take a look at that because, well, that challenges your belief that Trump is going to make America great again. Same old, same old. Oh, my God. U.S. accidentally arming Al-Qaeda again? Yeah, under Trump. How many times did we see that under Obama? IMF discreetly preps massive aid package for day after Maduro's fall. Trump will get this job done. Two decades of trying to get control over Venezuela. Trump is going to get that job done. Oh, because he's just great. He's great. So we know what happens. International Monetary Fund, yes, making plans for the day after embattled President Maduro falls. News of IMF maneuvering also comes amidst fresh reports the U.S. is amassing aircraft, troops, armored vehicles on the Venezuelan border under the pretext of, yeah, getting humanitarian aid into the country. Libya, Venezuela. And we sure are. Military planes. 
This was posted, um, well, just uh, about 16 hours ago. Military planes carrying 180 tons of aid for Venezuelans fly from Miami to Colombia. We're so good. We're so morally superior. We care so much, don't we? Same old, same old. The script is the same. But those stuck in the matrix, if they're conservative or Republican, that's why we were on the same page during the Obama years. Their leader comes into office. He's going to make America great again, and I'm just going to focus on that wall. That's all I'm going to look at, Carol. Only the wall. He really wants that wall. Oh, and the arrests are coming. They're coming. They're coming. The Q, folks. Well, it really is time to step outside that matrix and take a good look. Use critical thinking, um, your discernment, look at the evidence objectively, and if you do that, you will see. Same old, same old. Deutsche Bank reneges on pledge to help distressed homeowners. So when Obama, in his last year, the Department of Justice made a deal with Deutsche Bank, and that deal was to help the distressed homeowners impacted by the housing collapse, which that bank was part of. Yes, we are not going to prosecute fraud, bank fraud. It would hurt the economy. So we're going to have these banks claim that they're going to help those that they hurt. But now, well, not so much. Not so much. The bank will use the money for new loans. Okay. What is Trump's Attorney General going to do about that? Not much. Draining the swamp? Nope. Filling it. Filling it with just different faces of a evil. So, Trump's nominee, William Barr, promotes surveillance state. Oh, he is, he is all for tyranny. Could care less about the Constitution. But I'm supporting Trump because he's working for us. He cares about ordinary American people. Can't you see him at those rallies? He just talks like he's like one of us. Yeah, it's kind of like through the Bush years. Or when Bush was campaigning. Yeah, I'm going to vote for someone who uh, I could sit down and have a beer with. Yeah, that's who I want to be the president. We are moving. Uh, just at rapid speed. For the final clamp. On all of our freedom under Trump. And you know what? Maybe I was naive. I actually did think seven years ago, eight years ago, that we had a chance. Not do I know we have no chance. Not when we have so many p people with their belief and they refuse, refuse to reevaluate those beliefs. Halliburton lobbyists for in Interior Secretary under Trump, Military Industrial Complex. I am pleased to announce David Bernhardt. <sighs> Unbelievable. Pentagon documents the military's growing domestic drone use. Trump do anything about that? Amazon, second year in a row, doesn't pay federal income taxes. 
Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Well, it's government, so they can do whatever the hell they want to do, right? And we know that our representatives don't represent us. They represent corporations. So Amazon, you don't have to pay any taxes. You little people, though, no relief in sight for taxpayers denied deductions for state and local taxes. Oh, but Trump, he really, he reformed tax law. He reformed, made it great for ordinary Americans. They're going to be saving so much money. You were played. You were played. Do you understand that government is filled with criminals and they steal your money? Americans still giving up their money. Why? Because if they don't, it's going to be taken by force. A free people? Federal law will garnish wages from paychecks of student loan holders. Oh, well, if you saw uh, the amount of money that the Department of Education, understand this, we are a corporation, our federal agencies, corporations, they are for-profit corporations. Americans now owe $1.56 trillion in student loan debt. Wow. That's about $521 billion more than the total U.S. credit card debt. It's a sham, and it works. So now they got to get back that money. We're going to garnish the wages as government subsidies continue to flow into colleges across the country, the price of tuition continues to skyrocket, with some rates shooting up nearly 400% since 2000. Over the same period as the price of college went up, medium income in the U.S. went down. This created the perfect storm for what we are currently witnessing right now, a black hole of student loan debt. What happened? in a relatively short period of time. So when we went to college, baby boomers, right? Tuition was rather cheap. Student loans were not so significant. And guess what? When we graduated, there were jobs. There were jobs and careers. Not anymore. Not anymore. The economy is not good. The jobs, service sector jobs. So these kids are coming out of college with mega student loan debt and they're all excited about getting a job in their career and they find out there ain't none. So they end up being bartenders and waitresses. And because rent is so high now, they can't they can't afford to live on their own. They go back to their parents and they're judged for it. And yet the circumstances today are nothing like they were decades ago. If you look at the circumstances, you'd understand why so many kids are leaving college not to be going off on their own, but going right back to mommy and daddy because the economy is not good. It's not. Low paying jobs make it extremely difficult to pay back the mountain of debt many of them have accrued while seeking higher education. And what's really sad is, whoa, well, Trump campaigned on getting rid of Common Core. <laughs> Another promise in the toilet. Um, I have, I have a subscriber slash friend who is a professor and she talks about 
the students in her classes in college that they don't know how to write. They do not know how to write. So the Wall Street Journal um, at more than it did this uh, study. At more than half of schools studied, at least a third of seniors were unable to make a cohesive argument, assess the quality of evidence in a document, or interpret data in a table. That's what my subscriber slash friend has been telling me. She sees it. These students in college going through that public education. Nothing like the public education decades ago. So far worse, unbelievably worse. Make America great again? You do something about these vaccines and you sure do get rid of Common Core fast. He didn't. Trump didn't. So the government who is responsible for creating the problem will be the ones to post the solution by forcefully taking back the money. Yay. That's America for you. And Trump is doing nothing about it. And it looks pretty likely that this is what they're going to be doing. So you're going to be garnishing wages from bartending jobs and waitressing. The whole system is set up to get you to be a debt slave. And we've known that for a long time. So pay less. Another shuttered U.S. operation. Another, another company down. And look at all of these bankruptcies. 35 bankruptcies since uh, 2016. Huge, you know, like corporate stores, Mattress Firm, Sears, Brookstone, Heritage Home Group, uh, Nine West, Clara Stores, The Bon Ton, um, Toys R Us, Aerosols, Gymboree, Rue 21, Payless, on and on, Radio Shack. No, our economy is not doing well. So, I said that I was going to be reading this article, or parts of it, Five Insane Provisions in the Amnesty Omnibus, Omnibus Bill, which Trump signed. But he's declaring an emergency to get eight billion for the wall. Yay, Trump! Crumbs. You love your crumbs, don't you? You love your crumbs. He is so playing you. And if you're not if you I I just don't know what to say. The worst provisions are written in vague language, ensconced in a 1169 page bill which has already been posted online in two different versions. That is exactly why Democrats are salivating to vote on this within a few hours of passage. How do you read that? How do you read that bill in a few hours? Oh, that's right. Our representatives, they don't write legislation. They don't read it. They just vote on it. However, the corporate lobbyists want them to vote. And Trump signed it. So... Um, this uh, John Moore said mm, it's exactly why Trump has a responsibility to oppose it immediately and demand at least a short-term clean continuing resolution so that he can digest the consequ uh, consequences of this bill. If he cannot make that simple demand, which would not even trigger a phony shutdown, then his presidency is worthless. It is worthless. Oh, for us, but not for, you know, people like Netanyahu and the elite scumbags who are destroying us. Um, the process is indefensible, indefensible. It is immoral from any ideological perspective to vote on a 1,169-page omnibus 
with new provisions on immigration amid a border crisis. We are already four and a half months into this fiscal year and have been operating on stopgap bills. There is no rush, rush to vote on something like this. No rush because we could continue with those stopgap bills and debate the omnibus bill, but no, uh-uh, rush to sign it. And Trump, uh, rush to vote on it, and Trump signs it when he didn't have to, but he did. So you got to ask yourself why he did. And now he's doing all that drama. Oh, it's an emergency. I got to get $8 billion. But how much did he ask for initially? $25 billion. Then he negotiated himself down. He's supposed to be the great negotiator. He negotiated himself down to $5.6 billion. Then he just walked away with $1.6 billion. Oh, but wait, that was in the bill. So now he's, oh, it's an emergency. I've got to get $8 billion. The bill actually is $1.375 billion, enough to construct 55 miles. I told you this this wall has it's like North Korea. They 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 just oh reignite the issue periodically when it works for them. But it doesn't work for us because we never get what we want. It's worse than that. The bill limits the president's ability to construct barriers. <laughs> Did you know this? It limits the ability to construct barriers to just the Rio Grande Valley sector and only bollard fencing, not concrete walls of any kind. Section 231 prohibits construction even within the Rio Grande Valley in five locations that are either uh, federal or state lands. Wait a second. Federal? State public lands? Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Right? The challenge with building a wall in Texas is that, unlike in other states, the feds need to navigate issues with private lands. Eminent domain. Trump is a big, hey, steal that land because I want to build my cons my casino and I need a parking lot so let's let's just try to steal a woman who was I believe in her late 70s or early 80s steal her home that's that's the guy that you support and think is great uh well so, yeah, there would be a lot of eminent domain issues that I have mentioned in many videos telling you this wall ain't going to be constructed for a really long time. Not with so much private land. Because those private owners are going to be uh, fighting it. All right. So, the first place then you would construct fencing is on public lands but it's now prohibited. The national parks along the border have gotten so bad that park rangers are scared to travel alone in them. Oh, wow, isn't it interesting? How is it that this bill prohibited building on public land and Trump signs it? You don't think you're being played. Okay. Um, on second thought, it's likely that not a single mile of fence will be built. Section 232 of this bill states that prior to use, prior to use any funds made available by this act for the construction of physical barriers, the Department of Homeland Security shall confer and seek to reach mutual agreement regarding the design and alignment of physical barriers within that city. With whom must the feds consult? The local elected officials. Well, so the bill, get it, 
It's limited to the Rio Grande Valley. These are the most liberal counties on the border. And there is practically no local official who supports the wall in these counties. So it's the Beto O'Rourke type of politician in those regions. They have de facto veto power. And Trump is signing this. I, I'm, you know, I, I can hear you know, comments that I've gotten in the past. They, they just come to me like one. Well, Carol, he probably doesn't even know about that. You're fired. Section 224 prohibits the deportation of anyone who is sponsoring an unaccompanied minor, illegal alien, or who says they might sponsor a UAC, unaccompanied alien child, or lives in a household with a UAC, or a household that potentially might sponsor a UAC, it's truly difficult to understate the betrayal behind this provision. Under current law, law, Central American teenagers are only treated as refugees if they are a victim of severe form of trafficking or or and, I'm sorry, and have no relatives in the country. Yet almost all of them are self-trafficked trafficked, oh, by these very illegal relatives who are indeed present in the country. Rather than clamping down on this fleecing of the American people, the bill gives amnesty to the very people paying the cartels to invade us we can call this the MS-13 Household Protection Act of 2019, said Jessica Vaughn of the Center for Immigration Studies. ICE has estimated that 30 to 40 percent of MS-13 members it has arrested in the last two years arrived as UACs. There is no reason to shield any of these individuals from deportation. If there are illegal aliens here, who do not yet have a child here to serve as a deportation shield, this certainly is an incentive for them to make the arrangements to bring one. While offering no new funding for ICE, deportation agents, or immigration judges to speed up asylum claims, as the president requested, this bill adds another $40 million for the Alternatives to Detention Program, which moves asylum seekers to facilities in the interior of the country where they are usually, usually released. Vaughn, who has studied interior immigration enforcement for decades, warned that this bill will further expand and institutionalize the catch and release policies for those arriving illegally at the border from all over the world. And guess what? Trump just signed this bill. Uh, re-awakening Obama policies of catch and release. Same old, same old. Most of these people have no intention of asking for asylum and no, they don't qualify for it, but are simply joining the illegal population. Knowing it's unlikely that they will be deported, the bill, the bill funds case management staff to keep tabs on those who don't abscond immediately, but no money for ICE officers to find and remove them. This bill reduces border detention beds from 49,060 to 40, 520 beds. Rather than expanding them as Trump demanded, it contains no funding for more border agents. It offers 3.4 billion for refugee resettlement more than last year's record levels. Remember, much of the refugee program has been used not just for bringing in traditional refugees from overseas, but to resettle the, yeah, Central American teenagers being self-trafficked, 
They traffic themselves through the border, empowering cartels, cartels and taking advantage of us. Um, this bill doubles the number of H2B, non-agricultural, unskilled seasonal workers who will continue to be a public charge on America. This gives you a glimpse of what is driving this amnesty bill on the Republican side. And taken together, these provisions will aggravate the criminal conspiracy of the cartels and continue the invasion. Just this week, 1,800 units, family units, came in during one 24-hour period, a new record if Trump signs this bill instead of using his veto power and firing the people in the White House, promoting it, he deserves to lose re-election. Okay, look. Anybody who is supporting Trump, certainly at this point, you are not awake and you are not a truther, quote unquote. You are so much a part of the problem. All links are below.